We are usually looking for a compartment that looks approximately like this. It's usually attached with a couple of screws, so remove them. There we go. And if we open this little compartment, there is the hard drive. Now it's a little bit hard to see, but if we look here, there is a connection here. So what you do is you take the compartment and slide it to the side. And it's now disconnected and you may now take this uh, little hard drive out. And there we have it, a hard drive. As for disconnecting and connecting SATA hard drives in desktop computer, the process is really simple. You need a power like this and you also need a SATA connection like this. And you need to make sure that you select the right port on the motherboard. There is an express port or the faster port where the other hard drives go. And there's a tray to secure them, which is good. So you'll just connect in the power, just like that. And you will connect in the SATA drive data transfer for the SATA connection, just like that, and just insert it. And of course, do this when the computer is off, otherwise your computer may crash. If you need to extract and insert an M2 drive, it's really simple. It's just a simple screw and it's spring like that. But if you don't have any free M2 slots, you will need an USB adapter, but most computers has one or two M2 slots. To you use your laptop drive in a desktop computer, you will connect the SATA port here. And from the PSU, you will connect the power here the same power that goes to the other drives in your computer. Just like that and you're connected up. To insert this hard drive into another laptop, we'll need to flip it open to open it up. So we have a good couple of screws here. So if I open this up, for example, we can see that in this compartment, we have this laptop's actual current hard drive right here. So these are SATA hard drives. Many uh, more modern laptops have uh, not SATA hard drives, but M2 drives, SSD drives directly on the motherboard. Right, then we have a last compartment here that's openable. And here you can see we have an empty SATA connector here. So this is namely a space for another hard drive. And then you can take your hard drive and insert it. And that's basically all there is to it. When your computer starts, it will display a key you need to press to start a BIOS. It's usually F12, Escape, F9, F2, depends on the system. You see it on screen and click on it several times until you get to BIOS. The BIOS looks differently dependent on the brand. You want to look for something called Boot and click that. Down below, you see the different instructions on how to navigate on your BIOS version. To get to boot and inside of here I can use different keys to reorder this list. It will start with the one on top. If you boot from the wrong drive after installing a new drive you simply need to change the order these are in. So right now it's this one is the highest and that's correct so it will start booting from it. However if for example the one you want to boot from, the drive you want to boot from, is on 6, you'll need to move that to number 1 on the list. Otherwise, it will not boot from the right drive. When you have reordered your list to satisfaction, go to Exit and Save Changes. Your computer should now boot successfully. When you have booted into your Windows system, you just right-click the flag and select Disk Management or search for Disk Management. Inside of here, you can browse the different disks, you can right click them and also see Open. And if you open it, you can basically explore the disks and check around. You can also find this list via this computer and you can browse around and see which disk is which. All right, so here you can see uh, we get this little prompt, initialize disk. Um, and if you get this little prompt, you of course need to select something. Now, MBR is pretty ancient. GPT is the kind of new one and is uh, required for most new drives. But if you're gonna use this on a really old uh, Windows system, you might change it to MBR. But generally, 
GPT is the way to go for basically everyone should just select OK. To reuse this old drive and basically make it useful in other systems, we of course need to clear it of stuff. So we're just gonna click delete volume and make sure that you have backed up anything you wanna keep there and that you select the right drive because that stuff will be gone. You get a pop-up that it's open in File Explorer because it is. Uh, so basically you will just click yes, but make sure this is really the drive you want to delete. And now it's gone. Now you can see it's unallocated there under disk one. However, there are two more partitions. So we'll just right click and remove them too. Unfortunately, you cannot remove the recovery partition if you have one of those here. So you will need to go into PowerShell Admin by right-clicking the Windows flag and selecting it. See from the list that we are working with Disk 1. Keep that in mind. Write in Disk Part to launch the program we're going to use here. And now you will write in List Disk to list the different disks. Now, as you can see from the list before, we're working with disk one in this particular case. So write in select disk one. After you have done that, you will need to write in list part to list the partitions. There is only one partition available. So you will write in select part one. Now you will write in delete part override. And here, did you catch that? It's now gone. You can delete any partition with this method too, by the way. Hover over the unallocated space and right click and select new simple volume. Beautiful. Here is the manager, click next. And here we can see what size you want to make it. If this is a hard drive, put this to max. You don't want to waste any space. If this is a solid state drive, an SSD, remove 10 to 5% from that. Select a letter that it will be called in Windows uh, file menu and select something that you don't use currently uh, so that you will not confuse yourself. Uh, in any case, I'll just uh, go down here and select X. So uh, now you can see here, uh, you don't need to do anything with these two and just click next. Here you can see we need to select NTFS or XFAT. XFAT is better if you use uh, some Mac OS with this drive too or something like that. But for Windows drive, it should be NTFS. Write in whatever you want this to be called. This is X files. And under allocation unit size, if you're only gonna store big files on here, well, then you can select um, 64K or the other Macs and it will be a little bit faster in search, good for movies. Perform a quick format if you want this to be quick and uncheck this if you want to give this drive away because that will encrypt anything that was on it previously. Um, if you do the quick format, it will be very instant, but you can actually restore some files that are deleted. So if you're gonna give this away, you'd really want to do the slow format. So don't check uh, fast format in that case. In any case, now you can use this uh, X files uh, as normal. You can use it to store stuff. You can install Steam games on here or whatever. You know, it's very simple. If you have any trouble using this process with like removing partitions and formatting and stuff, maybe you're not logged in as an admin. Uh, you probably need to be that to even be able to do all of this, especially the PowerShell admin. That's basically what you need to know in order to format this drive. And that's actually all there is to it. You should probably check out this video, which I think you would like. And if not, do leave a like and stay tuned for future videos because there will come a video that you will like. And of course, do check out our merch. Links in description if you want to get some cool Jimodism gear going on there. Any case, thanks a lot for tuning in and I'll see you next time. This is your host Jimodism, signing out.